How's it going, gang? Hope you're well, hope you're safe. Um, had an idea yesterday, so going to try it out today. And what I'm going to do for my nephews, nieces, the younger generation, um, uh, who, and also all my dyslexic people, you know, uh, and all my people who perhaps struggle with reading or aren't really into reading books, I've got this, okay? It's called The Rules of Thinking by Richard Templar. So, I'm going to teach you young'uns how to think. Probably the most important skill that schools don't teach you, okay? Um, what I'm going to do, especially for all my dyslexic people, is I'm going to read this out for you, okay? I'm going to make a lack of video series, yeah? And every single day, there's 100 rules in this book. They're quite short, so we're going to go one rule a day, okay? Hey, look, they're quite short and easy. Let's start. So, where are we? Introduction. I think, therefore I am. As the French philosopher Descartes famously wrote, by which he meant that we know we exist precisely because we have the ability to question whether we exist. All very philosophical. However, it underlines the fact that thinking is at the very root of who we are. So it follows that the more clearly, effectively and coherently we think, the better we're able to live. Makes sense. Happiness and success can flow from good thinking in a way we struggle to achieve if our thought processes are muddled, messy and incoherent. Okay, so the, the more clearly and effectively and coherently we think, the easier it will be to achieve happiness and success. That's what he's saying. Okay. Our thoughts influence our feelings. So it is important to get this foundation right. Once you can think well, you have the basis on which to build the rest of your life. I agree with that. Your mind is your most powerful tool. Okay? Don't let it get lazy. This is not a book of tips and strategies for thinking. There are lots of those out there and some of them are very useful. But you won't find many of their techniques here. This book is different. It's about your mindsets, your ways of thinking. It's about understanding why you think as you do and using that insight to improve the way you think. To adapt to traditional saying, give a man a thought and you feed his brain for a day. Teach him how to think and you feed his brain for life. I want to pass on a lifetime of observations and experience about the kinds of thinking that really work for people. The habits that turn you into a first class mind, a rules thinker. And it is all about habit. We spend all our waking life thinking, so we stop monitoring how we're doing it. We get sloppy without even noticing. When you take your driving test, you consciously do everything just as you've learnt it. Hands at 10 to 2. But by the time you've been driving a few years, you're crossing your hands on the steering wheel, slipping the clutch. You've stopped thinking about it. That's great for all the bits you're still getting right. It's good news that you can now steer instinctively, but when it really matters, you've forgotten some of the key skills without even knowing it. Whether or not we learn good, good thinking habits as children, we still need to monitor the way we think. We can learn new skills, brush up the rusty ones, drop the bad habits we've gotten into. Researchers have recently discovered that it takes a good 66 days to embed a new habit. That's just over two months. It was a proper scientific study with no agenda, so there's no reason to doubt its findings. There's a little star, a little asterisk there. And at the bottom, yeah, there's the asterisk again. So that means there's an additional note for that, yeah? And the additional note for that asterisk, let me read that sentence again. It was a proper scientific study with no agenda, so there's no reason to doubt its findings. These things are important. Rule number 93, don't trust statistics. I suppose we'll get there and find out why. All right. Although, of course, it's an average figure and doesn't necessarily take into account whether or not the new habit is useful or enjoyable, or whether it's a weekly or an hourly habit, which must make a difference. Still, 
It's evident that you can learn to think smarter as a matter of course if you practice the rules for a couple of months or so. There's a section at the end of the book to help you with how to do this. The difference in your life and your work will be apparent as soon as you start, before the 66 days or so that turn it into a habit are up. Okay, Richard, we'll see. We'll do this. It won't all become unconscious after that, though, because as you read the book, you'll realise that a lot of the rules of thinking are about being conscious of your thought processes. A lot of the problems of messy thinking stems from the fact that we're not aware of how our brains are working and we need to get more of a handle on that if we want to send our thoughts down the right paths. Once this becomes habit, it isn't the effort it might sound like. For one thing, we generally put effort into thinking even when we're doing it badly. So you'll mostly be redirecting the same amount of effort. For another thing, being a rules thinker doesn't mean you can't ever switch off, have downtime, veg out in front of a screen. Of course you can. Your brain needs a rest from time to time, same as your body. Correct. The habit of monitoring your thinking is really about questioning yourself and observing how your mind is functioning because of the insights that brings. For example, if you and your partner argue about whose turn it is to do the dishes, it's easy to wind each other up, regardless of who actually does the dishes in the end. A rules thinker questions why they are wound up and asks themselves, why have I just had this argument? What's really happening? Very few arguments about the dishes are actually about the dishes. They're about feeling taken for granted or being expected to fit gender roles or feeling exploited. Until you've thought that through, the dishes might be clean, but you haven't actually addressed the problem. So no surprise then that next time the dishes need doing, the argument will blow up all over again. That's interesting. I can relate to that. Some smarter ways of thinking make you feel happier and more resilient and others help you to organise more effectively or make better decisions. Rules thinking will improve your creativity and your problem solving skills and your ability to analyse, evaluate and critique intelligent. Thinking smarter will have a positive impact on every part of your life, at home, at work, in your relationships. To some extent, this book isn't about how to think at all. Many of the rules are about how to remove the barriers that get in the way of good, clear thinking, how to avoid self-interest, sidestep assumption, dodge the pitfalls. Once you do that, it's easy to think clearly. It would be implausibly convenient if there just happened to be exactly a hundred rules of thinking. So these are the key 100, which are more than enough to change a thought pattern significantly for the better. Once you've mastered these rules, you'll be much better placed to notice more of your own. Please feel free to share them on my Facebook page if you'd like to and help other people join you as a fully fledged rules thinker. Richard Templar. His Facebook is right there. Can you see that? www.facebook.com forward slash Richard Templar. Okay. Think for yourself. We'll start here and do rule number one. Yeah? If you want to be a top-notch thinker, you have to do the work yourself. That is to say, you have to do the thinking. You can't let anyone else do it for you. That might sound obvious, but you'd be surprised how often we take the convenient shortcut of adopting other people's thinking. All right, I'll let you off working out the theory of relativity for yourself. There are specialist areas where you don't have the skills to do the relevant thinking, and you're allowed to let scientists, mathematicians, top flight economists, and statisticians, statisticians, and engineers do your thinking for you. Apologies if you're a world-class physicist. <laughs> Richard's got a sense of humour, bruv. <laughs> Even so, don't take their word for anything until you've established in your own mind that they know what they're talking about and have no discernible bias. Other than these exceptions, where you need high-level training to understand the thought processes, from now on, you do all your own thinking, for yourself, by yourself. Unless you're an independent thinker, you really can't call yourself a thinker at all. Everyone has a different perspective, and another person's logic isn't always going to be right for you. We are all individuals, and not only is it lazy to let other people think for you, it doesn't necessarily lead to the right conclusions. So the rules in this, in this first section are the foundation that you need to lay before you can get any value Hang on one second. So the rules in this first section are the foundation that you need to lay 
before you can get any value from the remaining rules of thinking. Okay. Rule number one. Avoid echo chambers. When you're a child, you don't know any better than to think as your parents tell you to. If they say it's bad to put your elbows on the table or good to change your underwear every day, you believe them. It's part of being a child to absorb your parents' values and systems. As you get older, you start to find that your teachers have a slightly different set of rules and your school friends may have values or opinions that are different again. So you start to modify your earlier views and incorporate others that you acquire from fellow students or friends who might think very differently from your parents. And when you're young, you probably think about these quite carefully. Of course, it's easy and comfortable to hang out with other people who broadly think the same way as you. As you form your values, you look for other people who are like-minded. It means you have plenty in common and you don't have endless arguments. When someone else says what you were already thinking, it makes you feel validated. It makes you feel you must be right. It reinforces your view. It makes you feel like you belong. It's a good feeling. And you can all spend time together validating each other's beliefs and making yourselves feel right and valued. You can find a partner who thinks the same as you, can have friends like you, can work in a place where there are other people who think the way you do. And this is what we call an echo chamber. Yes, it's comfortable and affirming, but it makes it very difficult to be your own person. Everyone in your world votes the same way, supports the same causes, has the same beliefs, prejudices and values, and all belong to social media and online groups that reinforce them. And it gets harder and harder to think in any other way. For one thing, you virtually cut yourself off from being exposed to different ways of looking at the world. Except perhaps so you and your friends can all agree on how wrong they are in a self-congratulatory way. And that means you don't want to change your views or presumably your friends will all agree how wrong you are. And that's not going to feel very nice. And yet, and yet, the world is full of people. Lots of them lovely people who don't agree with you about everything. You may rarely encounter them, but can they really all be wrong? Some of them are just as clever as you and have arrived at their beliefs in as valid a way as you have. Maybe more valid because you've stopped thinking for yourself and moved into a groupthink where your views are the collective ones, where you don't really ever have to challenge yourself anymore. You're no longer an independent person. You've unwittingly become a bit of a sheep. If you want to be a rules thinker, you need to change this. Shape things up. Force yourself to broaden your views. Listen to other ideas with a genuine open mind. About the best way to do this is to cultivate friends based on who they are, not what they believe. Aim to have friends of all ages, from other cultures, varied backgrounds, different classes from your own. Between them, they'll make you see the world in a more nuanced way. And if your beliefs can't match up with all of them, because they're not all the same, You'll have to think for yourself. So, rule number one, avoid echo chambers. Cultivate friends based on who they are, not what they believe. Interesting. I like it. So far, so good. I'm not going to lie. I picked this book up on the way back home from Camden uh, last week or the week before. And I've read about 10 or so of the rules. Found it really useful excuse me, found it really interesting as well. And um, I thought my young'uns, they'd find it useful as well. And the idea of uh, doing these little video uh, blogs of the book, well, that came because quite a few people who I've either worked with or are in my life struggle with dyslexia. And um, I thought they'd find this useful and helpful. So, um, let me know what you think and I'll see you tomorrow for rule number two. It will be a much shorter video tomorrow. Cheers. Take care.